One of the tools we use to develop independent learners is the use of a unit guide. Unit guides are used consistently across all content areas. Teachers use them in in-person learning, but they also became essential during distance learning to communicate with learners and help them track their learning. The different elements of a unit guide build independent learners because they develop executive functioning skills. They connect all learning back to standards and proficiencies. They give learners ownership in the learning process by giving them access to different pathways. And also learners are continually goal setting, self-regulating and reflecting on their learning. Unit guides may vary from different content, but there are three consistent components in the unit guide. The first is an outline of the different assessments. This includes which of the activities and content will be part of the learning process, what will be part of the feedback loop or formatives, and what will be an evidence of learning or count as a summative. Unit guides also contain a pacing guide. This gives all learners access to all the content and also gives them opportunities to engage in different learning pathways. Learners can review previous content and also see what's coming ahead. Finally, there is a portion for learners to track their feedback and reflect on their learning. The reflection can take many different forms, including processing the information, a check for understanding, a review of important information, or learners thinking about the progress they're making towards their learning goals. Also, anytime they get that valuable feedback from a teacher, from a peer, or even themselves, this is a place where they track that feedback so they can revisit it when thinking about their next learning moves. Now we'll hear from teachers and learners to share some examples of their unit guides. Okay, my name is Aria and I'm in sixth grade. This is my unit guide from art class and from the pictures I took notes and I drew a picture of what my painting is going to be like. And I felt like I could do more because the extension, I know I'm really good at art and I really like to write and do extensions. So I decided to do that and extend the standards by writing a story about my painting and what was in it and what made me, what the idea was about. Hi, my name is Milo. I am in seventh grade and this is my math unit guide and I like it because I can check off the boxes um, and make sure I'm on pace and on the notes to myself, I can um, refer back to them on a test if I need like a little something to like remind myself. And uh, yeah, it keeps me on pace. My name's Karina, I'm in sixth grade and this is my social studies unit guide. I like it because you can pace faster and there's check boxes so you can check off what you did and you can pace faster. Hello, I'm Malachi and I'm in eighth grade. Um, so this is my unit guide for geometry and it's a great like central place where you can show you what to get done. So for instance, if we start a day off, we usually do screencasts and then a test and here it shows you what um, kind of pathways you can do. So teacher seminar collaborative or independent. So you choose one then from there you do the notes and you learn a bunch of stuff. And from there you get the form, you do the formative test and you get your score back and you can see the feedback from there and that better shows you what you need to work on and how well you understand it. My name is Estella and I'm in seventh grade and I like this unit guide because you're able to color code how you did in that class and how much you understood of it. And if you're below a green, like in a yellow or a red color, then you would do the IXL codes that are linked there. And there's other practices that you can do too to extend your learning into that subject so you'd be able to understand it a little bit better and hopefully push it up to a green.